<laughs> I the you problem with it, big man. women, they like short men. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's Kevin from Hydros Inc. And tonight I'm with some really good friends, guys. We have AC Gamer. Hey, guys, and welcome back to another episode. We've got the lovely Carolyn. Sorry, eating a muffin. Whoa. <laughs> She's eating a muffin. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have my good friend Warped Jester playing A Labs. Hey, everybody, welcome back. And we also have someone who's not in the call, guys. It's Zeke Strom. The shaman and she is lovely. Hey, baby. Hey. I keep seeing a storm. <laughs> I know it's strong, but I keep seeing a storm. Easy now, there, Kith. <laughs> <laughs> don't get don't get your pixels in up, right? Come to here, Max Nail. Oh, really? <laughs> At whichever vowel comes second is the one that. E I is an I sound and I E is an. Oh, well, he doesn't like me for some reason. I don't understand why. I nuke him once, just, and he's all over not my. Quite uh. picking up all the time. Yeah, I think you were just doing too much damage because I'm not really doing too much to this guy. These guys are red to me for the most part. Few of them are yellow, but. Now, yeah, how I'm close a little... are you to your level, brother? How close are you to your level? I'm actually not that bad. I'm I'm pretty close. I'm about 75% of one bubble left. So, oh, yeah, very good. So, yeah, you, we want you to level up quick. This is really good. It must be a really good uh, experience for you because it's a really good experience for me too, guys. I mean, it's a good uh, experience. Well, It'd be even know. better experience, like you said, if you can use the headbands. The headbands give just enormous amounts of experience when you turn them in in town. But don't you get oh, a bad yeah. faction for that? Uh, only with the uh, corrupt guards. The corrupt guards are bad faction, but uh, you get good faction with the good guards in Kinos. But I hear that the the corrupt guards. I think uh, Bushido was telling me that the corrupt guards wander, and if they catch you out, uh, they will kill you very fast. So mm -hmm. they're very strong. Oh so, yeah. You know, so had that happen on the uh, live version years ago with a lab because when I was soloing, I was killing the corrupt guards at one of the towers because I could easily split them and kill them. And I didn't even think about it. I just came walking through the main gate to do something and just got immediately cacked. Yeah. yeah, see, that would rough. suck. So, I mean, at, at what point do you want to stop? Is there any way to fix that faction by doing another quest, maybe, to kid Oh, I know that there faction? is, for sure. For sure. But that said, I mean, it, it really comes down to, like, I personally have never given two hoot nannies about it because I've never liked Kinos. And I've never had any desire to have any life here, so I couldn't give a poop less. That's true. Yeah, and usually if you leave this continent or this area of the continent, I should say, uh, you don't really make it back here that often, to be honest. There's yeah. just not a lot of dungeons, not a whole lot of reason to come over here unless you happen to be a barbarian and just have to go back to your your home base to get your spells. Like that's really the only reason yep. you trek through the Quranas. Uh, it's a great place for soloing, though. I mean, awesome for druids, and you know, I actually don't see too many necros out here. And I necros think they like anyway. anyway. <laughs> it's a good place. To, it's a good place to fear kite. I remember fear kiting in the Karanas with my, with my necro, necromancer quite a bit at lower levels. So, yeah, I mean, uh, this bandit's gonna just wander right through our camp, isn't he? Uh, what's up, guy? Well, I'm pulling right here. Do you think the necros they tend to prefer zones that have uh, smaller rooms where they can actually uh, do the most damage the quickest because they're able to kill so fast, versus these wide open zones where they actually have to go looking for the pools? That's a good question. I I prefer the wide open. Uh, the wide open zones, man, because like I said, uh, I did a lot of fear cutting, and with a zone like this, you really, uh, if you can pull the pull the mob, you can manipulate the mob by pulling them to a certain place and uh, getting them away from their friends. And then when you start fear cutting them, you got them all by yourself. You know, the zone's so big and so open uh, that you know I, I did a lot in South South Carolina. I remember uh, the Teshmal Knolls and stuff like that. So it's just a matter of manipulating the zones, and I really like to. I don't think I've spent a lot of time in Western Corona, though, AC, to be honest with you, man. I mean, uh, I really don't think I have. I, I remember doing this bandit camp before, uh, but I think this is basically my only WK experience except for that were werewolf that we killed the other day. Interesting. I never played yeah, I mean, it, but... if you're kiting, you know, unless you start. 
No, sorry, what was that? What did you say, Warped? I'm sorry? Uh, I was just saying, I, I've never really played Necros all that much, but I would think with Fear Kiting, you'd want to be more open space than you would closed rooms. Well, the, the thing about a Necromancer, now, I had a friend, our, our guild leader, who would go down into into the small rooms in Guck, uh, in Lower Guck, and he would actually leave his, uh, not on purpose, he would fall asleep sometimes and leave his Necromancer in the rooms, and the pet would just kill off everything that, that popped in the room. It just keep killing and he would you know get experience all night like that or until you know he went link dead or anything like that this was back when there was 51k modem so he <laughs> he actually he, he liked that he liked the closed in rooms because his pet was such so powerful that it would just it would destroy everything in there you know it, it handled a full pop and everything so uh you know i can't really speak to other necromancers all i can tell you is that uh my necromancer preferred wide open spaces he loved the karanas uh so that's my experience. Now, what about your druid? Where do you prefer to go with your M? Uh, anywhere I can quad kite, man. <laughs> but yeah, the druids <laughs> also prefer wide open. Uh, yeah, wide open spaces. Like I love South Karana. I love, right now, me, uh, my druid, and your shaman are in Eastern Karana, and I'm having a blast, man. We can pick. We can cherry pick our mobs. We can pull them away from the other mobs so they don't socially aggro. And we're just having a blast, man. And we're really uh, kicking a lot of butt in Eastern Karana right now, and. I'm really looking forward to going to the Eastern Waste. I'm going, looking forward to going to Ice Clad. I'm looking forward to, to going to Cobalt Scar. Uh, you know, all these places are such good uh, places for a druid to be. Even though Cobalt Scar is a little bit dangerous because of the, the, the ads, uh, the the fairy dragons that debuff you and stuff like that. That's, that can be a pain in the butt, but it's still a fun zone, man. It's, it's a fun zone to quad kite in. And I can't wait to do that with, with your shaman because all I have to do is. You know, you can uh, you can help me by keeping me healed in case I do get hit. You know, doing uh, there's plenty of things that your uh, shaman can do. Um, and uh, basically, what I'll do is I'll just get them, uh, get them, uh, you know, where that where I can quad count them, get them where they're stacked right on top of each other perfectly, and then run them around you, man. Run them around you in a big circle so that when when they all die, your shaman will get the uh, you know get some of the experience. And I, I can't, you know, I'm looking forward to sharing that with you, AC, because. <laughs> you're gonna get you're gonna get to see how good quad kiting experience is, man. So we're gonna have a blast doing that. And like I said, you you might be able to keep me healed and, and save my life from when I actually do get tagged. And it happens, man. I've been tagged even even when I became what I think of as an expert on quad kiting, I would get tagged still. I mean if you if you do a bad circle or if you get too close to the mob or you wait too long to cast, you're gonna get hit, guys. And with the oh. druid, if you're getting tagged by four big mobs uh, yeah, there's a pretty good chance they're going to kill you. They're going to take oh, you yeah. out. So, you know. quad kite, make a wrong, wrong turn. The one of them tags you and manages to stun you. Good night. Yeah, yeah, you did. So. <laughs> yeah, just say, it is a different uh, experience when you're running through a zone that everything is an aggro to you automatically. Yeah, you know, like dungeons is what I'm used to, and everything in that zone will kill you. You know, yeah, but out here in the open, yeah. it's kind of different, you know. And that's yeah. the experience I have with my cleric too. You know, clerics are usually down in the dungeons, but they're down in the hot spots. And like AC said, where the, all the mobs are are hostile, and all the mobs want to devour your flesh like hot, juicy steak with you know <laughs> a one sauce. So, uh, wow! Please, everybody knows <laughs> that clerics are tasty. That was that was hot. Yeah, right yeah, it tastes like a one sauce. I thought he was gonna do the okay, that maybe Hans fifty seven. Yeah. I, I was waiting for like fava beans. <laughs> fava beans. Fava. Jeez, that's disturbing. <laughs> in so many ways, on so many levels. Now, quad quad kite does net you a, ni a nice tidy profit, even with the extended downtime for yeah. a lot yeah. of regeneration. It really is a, a cost-effective way to go about making cash, so to speak, but. Like I said, you got to yeah, be careful. I remember, I remember uh, warped, uh, exactly what you're talking about. My, my, uh, you know, my cleric was first. I got him to max level before I started playing. And he didn't make that much money, man. I thought he was doing okay. But when my druid got up to where he was, uh, even before max level, when I got him to where he was in, uh, you know, uh, Cobalt Scar, man, he just made so much money. He became, he became my money guy. He became the guy that would, uh, he twinked out all my other characters from then on, man. I mean, the druid just had he he could make thousands of plat a day killing giants in the Wrath Mountains. Oh yeah. Or he could go, uh, yeah, I could go quad kite uh, Wervens in uh, in Cobalt Scar for for a few hours, and they would drop gems. And oh I'd yeah. Walk away from thousands of 
thousands of plat over there. So he just made so much money, God. so ridiculously fast. And I never ported. I didn't port people. Uh, you know, sometimes somebody would uh, send me a tell like, "Hey, I, I give you a hundred plat for for a port to this place and this place." And sometimes I would do that, but usually I was out quad kiting, man, and uh, it was just blast, man. Druids were so much fun to play, guys. What did you I, end up spending the money on? Winking other characters. I my druid, I remember <laughs> all the uh, ladies. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my druid. My druid still had leather pieces on some. Even at max level, he still had leather. I think on his legs and. Uh, you know, I mean, he had he had all this money, but I kept passing it down to like I, I twinked out this ogre warrior. So I mean, I spent hundreds of k on him, man. I mean, it was ridiculous how much money I spent on him. He had the finest finest gear that money could buy. Uh, I remember, and it all came from the druid, man. Well, I want to say one thing there too is I, I've had people in the past. And this is you know more of a past thing because this is an older game, but there are some people that would be just all up on your ass if you were. A twinked character, and I, no, I, I no. just want—I just want to say I'm sorry, but you know, if, if if this character is twinked by me from another one of my characters, that means I've already done the time. I've already yep, gone I'll through. I put in the time. Oh. Yeah, I've been piss poor piss trying to make ends meet, and it's fun. It's fun once in a while to have a twinked character. It doesn't mean you're yeah, always necessarily going to do it. One of my characters was twinked. I had fun with him. Another character I created after the fact was completely opposite. I, would, I didn't give him or share anything with him, money or anything. I know exactly what you're talking about, man. I mean, like I said, I, I twinked my Ogre Warrior out. I twinked another couple of characters out. But it, it changed the game for me, man. It changed. It fundamentally changes the game at lower levels. And I remember actually making, I think it was a mage back in the day before I, before the, the accident happened and I couldn't play any longer. And I did not twink him because I did. I wanted, I wanted to fill that challenge and that, uh, you know, the exertion of raising a character up from nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I mean, I, you know, I know what you're talking about. That, but as far as twinking goes, guys, if you can do it, I have no problem with it. In fact, I enjoy twinking out a character, and I can't wait. My first character that I'm going to twink is going to be a necromancer. When I when I start making money and I get the platinum, I'm going to I'm not going to max twink him. I'm not going to make him super powerful or anything. But I'm just going to make sure he has some really good gear to start with. So you because I'm really the one class uh, cheap and cheaty. Got it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I just I, I love my necromancer, man. I remember I remember winning a lot of duels with him, and I remember kiting uh, oh. worms and stuff in Skyfire and 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 in the Badlands and stuff like that, or the Burning Woods, you know. And I just had so much fun with him, man. It was now, just just an awesome character to play. It, it, it's, it's funny you talk about uh, winning uh, duels with him because did you guys ever see any of the actual? Uh, class versus class duels, the official class versus class duels they had on uh, EverQuest server. No, but uh, I would like I to. I would like to. Oh. They, they were fun. They had. They, they, they were really cool because they'd have these you know, these competition events where, like, uh, you know, they'd have wizard versus wizard or bard versus bard or whatever. For, like, for example, for warrior versus warrior, they had a dedicated, you know, cleric run by uh, GMs, and the warriors would just basically knock it out, duel it out. But one of the, one worst, of the worst, most painful duels to ever watch was the finals of the Necro versus Necro. Because all they did was Fear. pop up, uh, drop, drop a dot, dot. feign death. Oh. <laughs> 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 or leech life, life and then sit there for a little while. It was the most longest drawn out duel I've ever seen. I enjoyed I enjoyed playing a Dark Elf Necromancer as far as duels because I could hide. And hide, well, believe it or not, guys, is a big weapon, man. If you can uh, if you can hide, you know, first of all, like uh, Fiend Death drops, or they, they, they no longer target you. If you can drop their target uh, before they can no longer target you, and then you can hide, it gives you a real, bag adva a real big advantage until you decide to nuke or pull or do whatever you're going to do. But, yeah, man, I mean, being a, I thought that uh, being a Dark Elf Necromancer did give me an advantage in that one regard. Uh, but my next, my next uh, necromancer is definitely going to be an XR because of the regen. Regeneration for an uh, for a necromancer is uh, like Dark Dragon says. Sometimes it's like having crack. So I mean, uh, yeah, the, I'm definitely going with the XR. You know, their intelligence isn't that good starting out. And what about you, AC? Uh, what are you talking about? The character you're talking about, the the. The lizard. Yeah, he's gonna be necromancer yeah, on that one. Yeah, I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with the XR necromancer definitely because of the region. Yeah, for me, I mean, we've pretty much 
played all the classes that I really want to. We have a full roster of characters on our account right now that we do together. So I got all the ones that I want. I do want to play a little bit more of my Shadow Knight, try to get him up a little bit higher so that I can do a little bit of playing because I absolutely love it. It's been way too long since I've been playing this guy, and I can't wait till I get Feigned Death and we can actually go up there and start pulling some really hard mobs. Because we have these guys down here, the three uh, that are up, we have four actually that spawn, but we managed to break the camp a little. If I had Feigned Death, I'd be able to pull this so much easier, but yep. unfortunately, yep. the only way yeah, we're going to have to do it is uh, with the root we did last time. Oh. Uh, when you guys are ready, if you guys have power, if not, we can wait. And I'm down. I can pull other yeah. ones in the meantime. Who needs okay, uh, yeah. this? You've got a us? gnome. <laughs> yep, I just was uh, yellow, making sure that our yellow cleric had uh, and white. Amount of power. There is there is one more class that I was uh, that I was wanting looking forward to play for, and that's the wizard. I want to make a dark elf wizard eventually too. Besides the necromancer the that I haven't made, so yeah, I definitely want to make a, a dark You're elf wizard. Picking that's the wrong just, race, but you know whatever. Uh, no, <laughs> no, they start off with higher intelligence than gnomes, dude. Okay, when you guys are ready, I'm gonna go with the, uh, the all right. right. This time I'm gonna get the bandit at the back, guys. Seriously. Okay, so whenever you're ready, okay. I'm ready now. I man. got the guy on the left. Okay. All right, three, two, one. Ah, uh, here they go. Oh, now I am gonna run it straight up. My, I probably uh, shouldn't have run my, my route went off a little bit too early, and I end up pulling their interests. Oh, okay. There we go. Let me see if I can grab. There we go. Yeah, I oh, made sure yeah. not to touch yeah. her, so she was very easy to pull off. And this Carol was taking right the middle of it. <laughs> I was gonna say, this thankfully the shaman. Pull. Uh oh, no, I don't, worry, down I don't, don't worry. I'm just pulling this guy back a little bit and rooting him again. Oh, oh, you oh, wow. resisted. Nice. Let me Where know if you go? need help. I'll go over there and get him. I got him. Very good, pet. Very good. Nice. Love and nice who's really good love my pets, huh? Who's good pet? Yeah, who's a good pet? You're a good pet. You're <laughs> a good pet. <laughs> I like him because he kicks ass and he's small, just like me. Yeah, and he keeps aggro really well. Like yeah, I don't even does. have to worry about taunting with that guy. Now, Throw at some point in the future, that's going to pose a problem when I actually want to keep aggro. But for now, just that's tell perfect. me. Just tell me, and I'll, I can turn. I can turn his taunt off. So, yeah, the, other, the other thing too is that depending on the situation, situation, this is the, this is actually one of the things I really like about the mage, and this is actually something I've, I've kind of been jealous of being a wizard, is the mages in, in a certain uh, uh, level, level range, range. they kind of catch up with wizards in terms of the spells they get or the damage they can do for nuking. Then in addition to having those pets, but I like the versatility of a mage and the fact that when you're in a small group that's incomplete, you lose a you lose a tank for the evening, you pull up your earth pet. You lose your DPS nope. for the evening. You bring up your water pet. Nope. Yeah, you're right. They're very uh, utilitarian in that kind of uh, sense that you can pretty much do any role that you need. You're not going to do it very well. You know, they're not going to do nearly as much as a necro rogue, but they can they can still hold their own. Yep. Which is nice. We're also you very really totalitarian. We're also uh, very totalitarian because we're for the proletariat. Well, I also like the fact that <laughs> since they can summon stuff, I can tell Kith this to get in the kitchen and make my damn dinner. <laughs> uh, I don't mind either. I like summoning the bandage because you get a stack of twenty, guys. So I've been, I actually used some tonight, and so that's a uh, that's good. I know we we get to summon chainmail, we get to summon leather armor later. We get to summon uh, better and better weapons for our pets, and that goes up and stuff like that. So yeah, the mage class is definitely a lot of fun. But all that stuff will disappear when you go linked, right? Or you log off? It does. It does. Uh, you have to be really careful with. Uh, because uh, you can summon these bags that uh, are you gonna hit me? Oh, thank you so much, lady. I really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you, you summon these bags, and they actually they have weight resistance on them. Or weight reduction. I'm sorry, weight resistance. Yeah, <laughs> resistance to weight, guys. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta be very careful not to log off with those with stuff in those bags. So I've done I've done that yeah, a couple no, of times no. where I had some heavy items that I really wanted. Luckily, nothing critical. But ones I really wanted, I forgot, logged off, and bye. Or yeah. go LinkedIn. Yep. I mean, if you if you lose oh, connection, dude. you lose it too. So uh, that's right. I know. I, I played my mage to a high level on live, guys, and and live actually worked that that problem out. You could go LinkedIn, and you wouldn't lose your stuff. Uh, so they did work that out. I'm not sure if uh, that. No, this is like, not on this one. Yeah. So no, they they fixed it to the, the point that... on live where. I oh, go ahead, man. 
No, you go ahead, brother. I, I said what I had to say. I was just going to say on live, they fixed it to the point where you could go, you know, link dead during a group and actually log back in and still be in that group. So yep. that was kind of yep. nice. Your character would stay there and not necessarily be kicked out. They gave you, what, what was it, like three minutes, four minutes to get back in before it booted you out, but you wouldn't take damage, you wouldn't die, which was a nice little buffer zone because in the old days, uh, if you lost your connection, your character might decide that, oh, I feel like running today, and he would run off into the zone somewhere <laughs> and end up dying. It would, and you would have no clue where your body was. You would just log in and you'd be dead. You'd be back at your buying point. And you'd be like, great, now I have to go find a Shadow Knight or a Necro to, you know, summon my corpse or find my corpse, and it was a nightmare. So uh, um, what was your worst-case scenario when you died? Did you have anything really bad? No, but I remember I remember about Classic. I remember that people would tell me I would I would go Link Dead, and I remember that people I would come back and people would tell me that the computer actually did better than I would have done if I was playing my character. <laughs> like, yeah, the, com the, the computer would take over the character and they would just kick the crap out of whatever they were fighting, man. I mean, uh, it actually happened uh, to my druid one time uh, fighting a hill giant and stuff like that. And, uh, and uh, But uh, usually the hill giant would win if I went Link Dead. Uh, but, you know, I mean, a guy told me that I just kicked the crap out of a hill giant, kept nuking it, kept rooting it, all kinds of sp whatever spells I had up. So, yeah, I, I, just, I just think that's cool, man, that, you know. Back in classic, the computer would take over for you and usually do better than you could do with your character. No, I, I actually had some people yell at me because uh, when I was playing my uh, monk, I got charmed by a mob. And my friend was oh, like, yeah. dude, why is your monk kick our ass so much better than you do when we're playing together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just interesting. That's, that's one, just one of the many quirks that I love about EverQuest and why EverQuest is still one of my, my favorite games. But And uh, every once in a while, you'll go through a you go through a zone and you'll see the mobs fighting each other, and I just think that's a, such an awesome touch, guys. Mm -hmm. When you have mobs fighting each other with with no players around, and you come up on to see that stuff, you know that the game's been well designed. But anyway, it's guys, I think game. I'm gonna call the episode here. Guys, I want to say thanks for watching. Guys, go check out Warp Jester Gaming. He's got a lot of great videos. Check out AC Gamer, of course, man. The man, the myth, the legend, one of my best friends. And uh, guys, until next time, we will see you in the next video.